the next list I am going to talk among the 5000 lists, you have to bookmark in the UMedico app, review this video, play with your friends, and but you need to remember this list. So, what is that list? ACL list may acute cardiac life support time pay. What are the drugs? What type of arrhythmia you give? Which type of drug? And uh, what is the dosage of the drug? Forget about need PG. To save somebody's life as an intern, as a house surgeon, ye to aapke tips mein rehna chahe. So now let us master this. We give epinephrine, we give vasopressin. When do you give epinephrine? If there is a cardiac arrest. One in my next video, I will try to explain you how the how to recognize on ECG. SVT, VT, um, then uh, um, cardiac arrest, etc., etc. So cardiac arrest, I thought, one milligram, one is to ten thousand intravenous solution. You need to give over a period of three to five minutes. If it is endotracheal, you are uh, administering epinephrine. It should be two to two and a half times normal of this uh, intravenous dose. Is what you have to remember. That is epinephrine. One milligram is a one. One is to ten thousand is a um, typical concentration which you should not forget. Then vasopressin. Vasopressin. How much you want to give? If there is a cardiac arrest, forty units intravenously, and uh, it can replace the first or second dose of epinephrine. And you can resume the epinephrine after 3 to 5 minutes. So, that is the story of vasopressin. You should remember 40 units IV. If you have injection, you will not forget it. Epinephrine injection is like this. Vasopressin is like this. So, epinephrine 1 is to 10,000, 1 milligram you have to administer. And then this is the typical vasopressin. Okay, so uh, next is adenosine. When will you give adenosine in the ACLS? Whenever there is a cardiac arrest, 6 milligram IV push rapidly intravenous bolus, then 20 ml saline flush is what you will be giving. And you can repeat 12 milligram IV. Rapid IV bolus, you need to look at the monitor and then check whether there is a revival or not. But if there is a second degree heart block or third degree heart block, don't give adenosine. It is a strict contraindication. Second or third degree heart block, you don't give adenosine. So that is the adenosine. So what will you remember? 6 milligram IV rapid IV bolus is what you have to remember. So this is how you get uh, the uh, uh, adenosine, okay, adenosine is not here, okay. Then, atropine, how are you going to do atropine? Typically, the patient is having a complete heart block. Sometimes, if you give atropine, there can be re re the heart will revert. Complete heart block is because of the excess vagal tone, which is excess acetylcholine. Contract it by giving atropine. Suppose, if the complete heart block is not reverting with the atropine, then you can put a temporary pacemaker. So now the question is, how do you want to give the atropine? If there is a cardiac arrest, 0 0.5 to 1 milligram bolus and you need to repeat after 3 to 5 minutes, maximum atropine dosage permitted is 3 milligrams and uh, MI or hypoxia, you have to be careful and you try to avoid it if there is a hypothermia. That is the story of atropine. So atropine up to 8 milligram per 20 ml, 0.4 milligram per ml milta hai. So is ko 0.5 to 1 milligram bole to 2 ml le liye to. Then you can be able to administer and repeat it after 3 to 5 minutes. Now comes amidaron. So pehla amidaron kaisa aata? 150 mg per 3 ml or 450 mg per 9 ml ke composition mein aata hai a amidaron injection. So, amidaron 
if there is a cardiac arrest you will be giving 300 milligram iv and then 150 milligram iv if needed you have to administer alternatively you can give 150 milligram iv over 10 minutes and then 1 milligram per minute iv over a period of 6 hours and then 0.5 milligram per minute of iv over 18 hours that is how you can be able to give but you need to be careful if there is a second or third degree block or if there is a bradycardia while giving the amiodarone so typically amiodarone is given if there is a afib for the afib amiodarone is a wonderful drug similarly you can give it for cardiac arrest also so that is the story of amiodarone which you should not forget so these are all the classical acls drugs invariably one question is asked in the entrance exam lidocaine at least once you have to go to the iccu right away after this session is over and then check all these drugs sister mary or nurse lily will be having uh, all these drugs with her and she will be an expert about dosages so at least before her you should be confident right so lidocaine so you get 20 mg per ml 2% lidocaine like this so initial dose is 1 to 1.5 mg per kg body weight and uh, if it is refractory vf then uh, 0.5 to 0.75 mg per kg in 5 to 10 minutes and endotracheal tube if you are putting 2 to 4 mg per kg lignocaine can cause a slurred speech it can lead to development of bradycardia seizures etc maximum is 3 mg per kg is the dosage of lignocaine is what you are going to remember then comes the procainamide so if it is a hemodynamically stable monomorphic ventricular tachycardia that is the time <coughs> procainamide is the one which is given that's right mullai vandan is saying sir hamare paas rajya lakshmi aur bhagya lakshmi hai nurse ka name different hai chennai mein madurai medical college mein so um, let me tell you doctor for a house surgeon the first teacher the best teacher please don't forget is the senior most nurse in the emergency medicine department she is the one who has seen your uh, hwd in his, in his medical school days so there is a reason there is always multiple people from whom you have to learn the art of practice of medicine and the skills okay so procainamide typically procainamide you get 100 mg per ml solution like this monomorphic vt in a hemodynamically stable person procainamide is a wonderful drug and any pre excitation syndromes like wolf parkinson white syndromes may procainamide is a preferable one if there is a atrial fibrillation atrial fibrillation you give 20 to 50 mg per minute until you suppress it or if you are able to produce hypotension or if the qrs increases more than 50% that is the point until which you can give the procaine mi you give 17 mg per kg um, uh, has to be given uh, if uh, hypotension or qrs qrs complex happen to increase more than 50% and maintenance dose is 1 to 4 mg per minute but before you give procaine mi remember congenite uh, the congestive heart failure or any qt prolongation condition hai to then procainamide should not be given so this is the most important thing about the procainamide then one more uh, one more uh, important thing i wanted to discuss with you give me the board when when do you want to give procainamide is a very 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 important discussion you should remember about procainamide whenever there is a atrial fibrillation so when there is a when the atria is undergoing fibrillation 
there is an SA node, there is an AV node, there is a Purkinje system, right? Now. Generally, when the atrial fibrillation is there, why do you want to give digitalis? Is my question to all of you. Why do you want to give digitalis? Digitalis is vago mimetic. Vago mimetic. It stimulates the vagus. Vagus stimulation will make the AV node become refractory. It blocks the AV node. So that the atrial fibrillation which is there in the atrium cannot pass into the ventricles. If you make AV node refractory by stimulating the vagus, by giving the digitalis. That is the whole idea of giving the digitalis in to control the ventricular rate whenever the patient is having atrial fibrillation. Now, there is another way by which atrial fibrillation is created. What is that way by which atrial fibrillation is created? There is something called reentrant, reentrant tachycardias, tachycardias. Ye kya hota hai? Reentrant tachycardias. So, this is the AV node, this is the SA node. Sometimes there will be pathways, as in the case of the WPW syndrome, which bypass the AV node and directly connect the SA node in the atrium with the ventricles. Directly they connect it, right? So, whenever these pathways which are the direct connection are there, like in Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, then AV node become bypassed. Sometimes what happens is, in these people, if there is an atrial fibrillation, how is that atrial fibrillation is passing into the ventricle? It is passing through this bypass tract, through the bypass tract. If in this situation, if you happen to give digitalis, kya ho jayega? What will happen if you happen to give digitalis? Already AV node is bypassed by them. Further, you are suppressing the AV node. Then what will happen? This bypass become more uh, abundant. And the tachy, tachy arrhythmia, tachy arrhythmia worsens. That is what you need to basically remember. So, your mama is here. SNOD is like your proposed father-in-law. There is a boy who finished USMLE and ready to marry your mama's daughter. Upar se tu ye vi nod hai. Depress ho ke. Seat ke bina bait ke. But uh, all your love is for that Meenakshi who is your mama's daughter. So, suppose if you happen to give digitalis. Digitalis is like need PG exam. You will be made to further fail. And your mama will take a quick decision to get his daughter married to that USMLE boy. Too much na? So, Digitalis is the drug of choice for the atrial fibrillation in any other scenarios, but not when atrial fibrillation is there with a bypass tract, is what you have to re-entrain tachycardia if it is there, then digitalis is not the right one. We should choose one such drug which will block this bypass tract preferentially without affecting the AV node. That is the property of procainamide. Procainamide. So, whenever bypass tract is there, atrial fibrillation hai to, the drug of choice becomes the procainamide is what you need to remember, not the digitalis. But, if there is no bypass tract, regularly atrial fibrillation is tempting to pass through the AV node into the ventricle, then you need to use digitalis as a rate limiting drug is what you need to ultimately remember. So, that is the funder of it. So, uh, procainamide ka ye hai story give me the slide so this is the story of the procainamide then sotalol the potassium channel it acts on 
it is given in a monomorphic VT 100 milligrams so you get 150 milligram per 10 ml like this so 1.5 mg per kg over a period of 5 minutes and if there is a CHO for QT prolongation just like procainamide it is also a contraindication for so all is what you need to remember so shanti 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 ki. so very good narendra says sir maza a gaya hai hum to abhi topic of acls drugs dosages protocols about procainamide we became expert any question asked usmle ho unka baap ho ya dmb ho need pg ho pgi ho we are ready to face the challenge. Wonderful.